Darrell Hall, and I'm here with Howard to talk about uh, our new Hall & Oates tour, holiday album, and also my uh, new webcast called Live from Daryl's House that's coming out tomorrow, actually. Well, Daryl Hall, look at you, yeah. man. You look, look good. Well, thank you. I like the beard. Oh, you like the beard? Yeah, yeah well, I just, is... you know, I'm up, up in, the, in the woods, man, so I'm, it's my woodsman's and look. And the shirt. So we were all speculating, how come the other cat isn't here? I mean, I know you're the guy with the talent, and you wrote all the songs. Oh. Well, no, I, I knew you were, somehow knew you were going to say that. <laughs> the other guy with the talent, and wrote, um, who wrote Man Eater Out of Touch, and she's gone. Um, let's see, where is he? He's in the woods also in, in Colorado, though. So, you know, is that what, a, do you live in the woods? Well, yeah, I live up in uh, Dutchess County. Oh, you do, but you're not close with. Uh, I mean, when when I say Hall and Oates, we think of like two brothers who you know went well, through all that. That would be together. correct. Yeah. Two brothers that live on opposite sides of the world. But yeah. uh, the, the fact of the matter is, you're not crazy about Oates personally, right? <laughs> is that true? <laughs> Come on, be honest. I mean, be honest. You want me to be honest? Yeah, be honest. Am not, I crazy the, about him? Well, he makes me crazy sometimes. He makes you nuts. But do no, you no, no. I like John, man. John well, and I have been friends since we're teenagers, man. But you're not friends. I mean, you don't hang out. Together. Well, we're more than friends. We're like brothers. No, but wait a second. You do sometimes not. Sometimes you're not friends with your brother. Hall and Oates don't hang out together. Like no. You guys don't go to a bar together. You don't go and play video games together. You don't... I don't do any of that stuff alone. Do you call each other on the phone? Uh, not very often. Really? So when it, when it comes time to tour, when it comes time to do a new album or mm -hmm. something musical, mm -hmm. you pick up the phone and you call them and say, okay, it's time, but uh, it's not awkward that you don't speak to each other other than nah. that? No, because we see each other all the time. We're, yeah. we're working all the time. But you don't like him. Because if you liked him, you would hang out with him, wouldn't you? <laughs> if he lived close to me, I'd hang out with him. What irritates you, you know, about he used to. Him? What, what goes irritates wrong? me? Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, let's see. Nothing irritates me because I'm so used to him. Do you ever have a non-work? beyond irritation. Is there ever a non-work conversation? Like, do you ever say, hey, how are you doing? your family? Well, basically, <laughs> well, I see his family all the time because we travel together and, you know. He's married? Yeah, he's, he has a wife and, and a really cool kid. Tanner, and uh, yeah, we travel together. I mean, we in fact we seldom have musical conversations. How's that? How old were you when you met your partner? Sixteen. Sixteen years old. Uh -huh. You were in bands. You were both musical guys. Mm -hmm. uh, the way I heard it is, you were playing somewhere. He was playing in the same place. There was some sort of fight broke out, yeah. and you guys met each other in an elevator. Yeah. Actually, actually, we were seventeen. Um, right. Yeah, we had just started. We were just uh, finishing high school and starting Temple University. And we, he had a band, and I had a band, and, and that's how we met. And yeah. you said we'll be a two. Some let's go out. Let's go to some coffee houses. Let's play some places. Uh, together. Actually, no. We we were friends because we both liked Philly soul. We were you know we were both in soul bands. Right. And we we. Started started uh, sharing rooms together in, when we were in college. And we didn't work together until after we got out of school. Well, I see. It when you uh, write, do you write together ever, or do is it always separate? Not so much anymore. Uh -huh. You know, it's we always did things separately. Our first thing was we said we're going to be two guys, we're going to share a stage. So from the from the very beginning, it was sort of two separate guys. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, we write together occasionally, and and we write separately. Mm -hmm. a lot. So you meet each other at seventeen. You say let's form a band together. Mm -hmm. We'll call it Hall and Oates. Mm -hmm. that, was, it was there, on the was, mailbox. So we was there it. ever a discussion that it would be Oates and Hall? Uh, no, because my name was first on the mailbox. I see. So it became Hall & Oates. That yeah, sounded yeah, good. Yeah. sounded good to you. Yeah, it sounded good to me. That's right. <laughs> and uh, there comes a time where you have your first hit record. Was this amazing to you? Did it look like for a while nothing was ever going to happen with this band? Did you ever think of leaving him? Uh, it, it went on. It went up and down for a long time. Before. How long was that time before you had a well, success? Well, we, we first started playing together in like 1971 or two. And uh, let's see. Then we, we put out She's Gone. We, we, wrote, we wrote and put out She's Gone, and it wasn't really a hit, but then uh, the, a group called Tavares had a hit with it, and uh, it was like a number one R&B record, and then we had Sarah Smile. That was our first hit. I didn't understand this about you. Sarah was a woman that you lived with for mm -hmm. 30 years. Yeah. I mean, you had a serious relation. Never married her. Not, not officially, no. You, you lived together. Mm -hmm. And you reference Sarah in your music a lot. But, uh, yeah, no kidding. She, Did, I, I wrote tons of songs about her, with her. She's a, she she co-wrote Man Eater and Out of Touch. And God, I can't even tell you how many songs. So she co-wrote these songs. She still mm -hmm. makes money from the Hall & Oates cat oh, catalog. Yeah, lots of money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and when you guys split up after 30 years, this had to be an emotional trauma. This Absolutely. is the woman you wrote Sarah Smile for. It's, how it, do you split up with that woman? I know. It's not easy. In fact... <laughs> were you... 
Facebook. You're asking me right now. That's six years ago, and I'm still I'm still splitting up, <laughs> no, man. Really? Huh? She left you, or you left her? Uh, it was mutual. It was. So that means you left things. her. Yeah. Well. All you right. Know. Yeah. So so was it was it that the temptation of the road? I mean, you are certainly a good no. looking dude. It wasn't the temptation of the road. We went way past that stuff. Did you did you cheat on her on the road when you were you know the height of Hall and Oates and you guys are going around and you're doing live performances and the women are throwing themselves at you? Is it almost impossible not to bang someone else? Uh, yeah. Uh, the word is yes. Yeah. So you had your sex outside. So you guys absolutely work through that. You're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Early on, from the very beginning. You so know. what happened? Did Sarah just get older and you get to, I mean, listen, let's face it. You're around a lot of young, attractive women. There's no way you can remain no, interested. It, it wasn't, it wasn't, it had nothing to do with older or any of that stuff. It had to do with just, hey man. Life changes. You, yeah, life changes. Life changes. 30 you know. years is a long time. It's a long time. So where you used long to write time. Sarah Smile, now when you sing the song, do you want to vomit? I mean, do you want to throw no, up and say... I'm yeah. still I'm still singing it to her. Do you still wonder why you were in love with her in the first place? Have you no. lo- you haven't lost that love? No, I, I have no, no, no questions about why I was in love with her. Has Sarah hooked up with another guy at this point? Uh, I, you know what? I think so, but you I'm do. not sure. Oh. <laughs> you don't know. You don't want to know. Do you speak to her? Oh, no, I don't. Uh, you yeah, really I do, do actually. Speak to her. Well, we have our ups and downs, but right now I'm not really uh, talking to her much, but... Uh, we, we go between really friendly to not friendly at all. Let me ask you something. Is there another woman in your life now? What, well, are you kidding? You probably didn't miss a day. Nah. <laughs> Guy like this, rock star, give me a break. My, I'm in tra- I, I just say I'm in transition right now. You're in transition. Yeah. You have a girlfriend, don't you? No, actually, I don't. You don't? I had one for seven years. but uh, Is it hard to be alone? Um, I got used to it. Do you, you live up in this in this this isolated, uh, isolated area I, I by got yourself? My, I got my people, you know. I have my, I have a, a extended family. My my uh, my sister and and everybody lives near me and uh, near you. But you live in the house by yourself right now, yeah. Like a farm kind of community. Uh huh. And you sit there by yourself mm-hmm. and you don't get lonely. Nope. You're able to do it. Mm-hmm. He's got mountains of books. Do you kill animals and eat them? Uh, do you do the whole thing? Well, since I got Lyme's disease, I sort of stopped doing that, but I was a major hunter. You, you know? had yeah. Lyme's disease? I have Lyme disease. How did you get it? <laughs> Living in the country, <laughs> the way you, everybody gets it. You were it. out hunting and a ticket well, on Well, you don't on have you? to be hunting. You can walk in your front yard. You can be in a suburban neighborhood and get Lyme's disease. It's one of the biggest uh, uh, How bad is it to have Lyme's disease? Bad. It's bad. Well, it can, it can run the gamut of, of mildly... Uh, uh, debilitating to severely debilitating. I worry about that where I am. There's you all these ticks and all that you kind of stuff. I it. do. I always check myself every you night. I look. You... But are you? Why didn't you move away from this area where there are so many ticks? Once you got this disease. Well, uh, because I like I like living in that part of the world. I like I like living in in nature. You used to go hunting. You used to do all that stuff, and mm-hmm. now you're a little bit paranoid about doing that. Well, I just don't. I don't like to walk. Spend that much time in the deep woods anymore because of the ticks. Yeah, these fucking ticks. I know. They ruined the your woods I, experience. They they really did. You you know, I, I used to like to, you know, I got a lot of land. I used to four-wheel around, mm-hmm. take walks in the woods. Fuck that now. You know, you have yeah. to What do you do? You sit in the house and you're hiding from the ticks. Well, I had to put up a deer fence at great expense. And, you know, I got to check myself all the, the time. The ticks won. The ticks, actually, the ticks did well, win did right Did you now. find the actual tick that landed on you? No. That- you never did. Never you never did. Saw, How were you Is diagnosed? Is it still in there? I assume you had sore throats. You had fevers. Oh, I, I, I had all kinds of tremors and fevers, and, and uh, uh, um, they thought I had spinal meningitis and multiple sclerosis and all How this kind of stuff. How long ago was this? Uh, three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah, I'm just getting over it now. Mm-hmm. What, they treat you with antibiotics. Yeah, heavy but. antibiotics and, and herbal things. All right. And you now feel better. I'm, I, every once in a while, I have a kind of a weird day, but yeah, 99.9% of the time, I'm fine. Are you able to exercise? Are you able to get oh, back yeah. into a routine? Yeah, all that. Yeah, that's all working. He's so right. Uh, Daryl Hall is so right about these ticks. Oh, no. And this, Never mind the terrorists. War on ticks. Uh, well, I'm not, that's no shit. I'm telling you. How can we get rid of You know, it's the, it's the. Well, first of all, kill all the fucking deer. That's really? That's what yeah. I said. We'd deer. have to get rid of War the deer. deer. Yeah. Kill the fucking deer. Because oh. your penis <laughs> get affected. Monhegan, I- let me tell you a story. <laughs> Monhegan Island in Maine had a major tick problem. And what they did, it was very controversial among the citizens, you know, and they killed all the fucking deer. And <laughs> the Lyme disease went away. Like it did, huh? Yes. Wow. But I was fucking rats, man. You know, in the, in, in, in the Middle Ages, would anybody said, no, the pretty man, those rats, they, you know, so they carry bubonic plague. Kill them. Fuck them. Yeah. Right. Fuck the ticks. You know, you're making me think. You know, I love minute, to look Howard. at deer. I think they're beautiful and all that. And, and they're and, fucking giant rats. 180 pound rats. Wow. This is the guy who wrote Sarah Smile? Yeah. That, gee, I thought you were a peace You didn't write anything about a deer. <laughs> I see you on the We Are the World video. Wasn't thousands that you? Of, thousands That's of That's people, man. That's not fucking deer. <laughs> and if thousands people can. Deer, right? Yeah, you know, every tick has like two, 3,000 ticks every, on Every deer. Has every deer. And they all have Lyme's disease. Ay, They're vague. walking Ooh. monster. Plague, plague things. So yes. let's get rid of them. Yes, you know, I, I, what I say.
say about sharks, too. People talk about our oceans. People are afraid to surf. We love the ocean. Kill all the sharks, too. <laughs> right? Am I, come on. Let's go. Well, what are we sitting here for? If, if millions of people got, surfing, got eaten by sharks, I'd agree. But absolutely. millions of people are getting bit by ticks. So there you go. All right. You're with wow. me on the deer I thing. I didn't know yes, we'd have I'm the anti-deer movement. Wow. So when we Kill the rabbits, too. <laughs> Fuck them, too. <laughs> You're, you're angry today. <laughs> sure, I'm always angry. <laughs> Fucking rabbits, rabbits and deer. So they've really so that so so now you're feeling better though. That's you good. think I'm joking, by the way? Oh, I'm not I don't joking. Think you're joking. We get yeah. it, brother. I'm right with you. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll kill here. a couple of deer. You know, when I was a kid, I lived in the country, and it was an unusual experience to see a deer because the deer population wasn't allowed to grow because it it was it, controlled. It was, it was controlled. Yeah. And now they're everywhere. They're fucking people up. People crash into them with cars. Right. They're they're really a major major menace. That's what it was like with blacks in my neighborhood. Hey! Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I ain't going there. Hey, hey. What's with you, Artie? What's going on? We're having a perfectly reasonable conversation. Artie wants to take it to another level. Yeah, no, man. I'm staying I'm, I'm, down I'm, to another I'm level. I'm against it. I'm <laughs> stating a fact. It was terrible. But you know what? The, the, you make a very good point about this. This Lyme disease is so debilitating. I knew a guy. Remember, we had a general manager who got Rocky. People die from it, man. People he die from it. He had the Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Right. Didn't That's he? only one of the many diseases you can get from it. And you were lucky that you survived because what if they yes, didn't diagnose it? I'm lucky I can work, first of all, because wow. I didn't think I'd be able to work. And, and I'm lucky I, I survived because it, I know people that have been so sick that they thought they were going to die. Were you in the hospital? Uh, I was in the hospital. I was on intravenous stuff. I, you know, the whole bit, man. Wow. I, I mean, it's, it's nasty. It sure yeah, is. It all sure right, is. you know what? I hate deer now. Me too. There you go. <laughs> I used to love them. We might ask you to cut some public service announcements about killing the deer because some people don't understand. <laughs> That's right. Give me a machine gun, man. You got it. <laughs> so, so why are you not getting the respect from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I wanted to ask <laughs> you that. I want to talk about that for a second. Sure, you have written... How many hit songs have you written? I mean, oh god, I don't even fucking know. How many albums have you sold? Something like sixty million. I, I, again, I lost track. Something like that. sixty million albums yeah. is an amazing accomplishment. What are you supposed to do? Uh, why is it a? What am I yes, supposed Gary? to do? I can give you a number: uh, thirty-seven top forty hits, eight number ones, and I don't know what the album sales are, but a lot of hits. How many? I think it's something like 60 million. 70 million records. Oh, I'll give you a hint here. Uh, you 10 million re off. You recently sold off half of your catalog to a publishing company, right? Yeah. And that brought in an estimated 25 to $50 million to Hall & Oates. Uh, correct. Wow. Well, you're not hurting for cash, are yeah, you? Yeah, but what uh, about the Hall of Fame? What, what is this disrespect? Um, you know, all these... All these awards, whether the Grammys or Hall of Fames or whatever, they're all political. It's, it's. I mean, uh, that's no big news, and that's that. I mean, what else can I say about it? It's politics. Who, but when you say politics, 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 it's the it's the fucking voters. It's the people that are uh, involved in voting. Okay, I, I, oh. let me tell you what it is. All right, who are the it's, voters? Kill the voters in in the in the seventies and the eighties. The rock press and and the, and the rock whatever you want to call it, the media created a canon. They created what is hip, what is not hip, what is deserving of uh, uh, of respect and what is not. Right. And those things are, if you if you tried to be Woody Guthrie or you tried to be, uh, you know, Howl and Wolf or whatever, you were cool. Right. And if you, try, you know, if you uh, hung out with the Spinners and you hung out with uh, Al Green, you were sort of suspect, especially if you were a white guy. Right. And nobody gave a shit about that. I, me and John have always fallen between the cracks. Well, you and, you and in order to, let me finish, in order to, for them to justify them, themselves and what they wrote about like that the Ramones were the greatest band in history and bullshit like that right. then they have to disrespect me in order to 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 Give justify their own shit Right. In other so words, that's why I'm not in the Rock and Roll fucking Hall of Fame. If you write <laughs> pop songs, if you write pop songs, in other words, if you write songs that have tremendous uh, appeal, so a popular appeal, appeal. Yeah. popular appeal, and, and, and also uh, you know musical they? impact. Let's let's not forget that it's not. I mean, just you're a real appeal. musician. I mean, you've written huge hit songs. But and Howard, the people he's talking about, they're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I know. Al Green and Holland. Well, Wolf there's a little bit of reverse racism going on. They too. allow those guys in a little bit because they don't want to look like it's just whitey. Well, what they call mean? me blue-eyed soul. That's fucking insulting, first mm -hmm. of all. Why is that insulting? Because I'm because I'm I'm a soul singer. I'm you know that's like saying what brown-eyed opera singer if right. you're black. Right. Right. Fuck that. So do you, are you bitter about it? Yeah, I swear to God, that. I never knew he was yeah. such an angry guy. Wow. I love him. <laughs> I'm bitter about it. I'm but bitter I, about I, it. I, I, but I don't blame you. In other words, I think it's funny in radio that I am not... It, there's something called the Radio Hall of Fame. It's a bullshit thing. It, I don't really care about it. But how can you have a Radio Hall of Fame and not have me in it? Not have you anywhere uh, near it. They don't it. even mention my name. Who's... Who's bigger than me? Uh, Let's kill some deer. Basically nobody. Yeah, kill some deer. <laughs> Who are the fucking voters?
<laughs> All I know is when you said you just got twenty-five to fifty million dollars, T-Bone's eyes were almost rolled back into his head. Ah. You should keep the Hall of Fame. The spinners ain't got that. That's right. No, what are you doing with don't. all this money that you're getting? Uh, <laughs> wasted on building houses. Are you building a lot of homes? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I restore colonial houses. That's your thing. Yeah. Well, and who are you going to sell them to now? Who am I going to sell them to? <laughs> yeah, I have to figure out who I'm. Yeah, I'm, I'm in, the, in the midst of uh, finishing uh, one big one right now. Yeah, there'll be foreigners. Yeah, there'll, there'll be heroes. somebody to buy that. Yeah. That's for sure. So, People that so, like colonial houses. So the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The Grammys have ignored you as well. That's right. That's, That's crazy. crazy. It's all part of the never. same package uh, of, of Why prejudice. is everyone against you? Uh, I told you why. <laughs> because it, it 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 justifies their. Past. But do you think it's things have me. changed to a certain extent with the the validation of Justin Timberlake? And oh, of course, no, Eminem no. We're talking about the past. We're right. talking about actually my, our generation, mm -hmm. right? Of, right? Of rock writers, the new yeah. generation. Yeah. Uh, they, they respect the shit out of Hall and Oates. There's something and, you know. All the new about. bands love love mm -hmm. us. But Hall and so Oates, we we've transcended the, the generational thing. But Hall and Oates never was the type of band that's got up on stage and, and did dances to their songs and all that. You that guys wasn't were the serious point. music. Well, I want to ask you a question. Oh. They're, they're, you guys were serious musicians. Yeah. Now, Nowadays, yeah. you mentioned Justin Timberlake. It seems like Justin well, Timberlake's got to get up on stage and dance and jump through hoops. I think, it's almost I, like a carnival. I think the video is what caused that to happen. People, Videos ruin music? Video ruin music. Why? Because people, when the, if it's a fight between the eye and the ear, the eye always wins. Right, so the eye became more important than the ear. Uh -huh. You have to be good looking there, you have to wear the right clothes, yeah. you have to have the whole image and yeah. all of that. And you have to be able to dance. Uh, yeah, basically. Is We're, it sickening you? Is the music industry dead? Yes. Is it because of the economics of it that people aren't buying CDs and records it's anymore? It's because the, it, because the record companies shot themselves in the foot. It's because they, they ate themselves. How, where did they go wrong? How could they have predicted that the technology would change and people wouldn't buy CDs? I don't think it was just the technology. They, they went wrong in so many ways. Well, how many, they backed the wrong horses in a lot of ways. They ruined their own music. They they backed video. They, it, it, it was it was uh, bean counters over art. You know when I start, when John and I started out, you know we were Atlantic Records. They gave us. They said, okay, go make a record. Right. And by the way, here's a Reef Martin to help you. That doesn't happen anymore. You know it's like you do what we tell you to do, and and if you don't do it, or if you if we get tired of you, then you're gone. There's no artistic freedom, is what you're none, saying. None. Really. Not not in major labels. This is very depressing. It is. But, um, you know, if you're in Blue Note Records or Rounder Records or, or do what I did early on and, and form your own record company, then you can then you have freedom. I was going to say, do you like this movement now where like bands like Radiohead are putting out their own albums? Well, I don't, I don't like what Radiohead did because yeah. they, they devalued their own music. Mm -hmm. But I like the idea. Of, I mean, I'm, I'm doing this thing live from Daryl's house. I'm starting tomorrow, actually. Yeah, we and, should mention and, this now. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's one of the first, and uh, well, certainly the first of its kind of, of internet concerts. Uh -huh. What is live from Daryl's house.com? It's a monthly live concert. It's actually not live. I've already done the concert, but right. it's going to be uh, debuted tomorrow at 8 o'clock and then sh shown subsequently uh, in part and in full anytime you want to download it. So when you say you live in this house by yourself now, you're telling me you haven't gotten laid in a couple of months? <laughs> what do you? You think I don't have visitors? <laughs> <laughs> People come and visit you, and they bang you, and then you. Yeah, I don't. Believe. I don't. I'm not the hermit of the woods, you know. Right. I mean, I, Where do you yeah. primarily meet women? Let's say a woman. Are you on Match.com? <laughs> yeah. Well, like, how does a woman get to meet you? Does she go to your show? In, oh, uh, you know, like uh, church libraries. What, the last woman. <laughs> the last woman you had sex with. Where did you meet her? Um. I mean, Where did I women meet like to know. And what's your age range, by the way? What are you dating? How old is the broad you date? I'm flexible. <laughs> right. You I'm would, flexible. Would you date a woman as old as 35? Uh, fuck yeah. You would. Of you course. wouldn't go as old as 40, though. Are you kidding me? You dated cougars? <laughs> cougars? Are you telling me you've dated older than 40? Man. Get out no of ageist. here. I am no ageist, man. What is the youngest you'll have sex with? Will you go below 18? Oh. No. You'll go to 18, though, right? You'll Absolutely. Go yeah, sure. Why not? Oh, you don't have that problem, huh? I, no, I have no problem. <laughs> so the last woman you met, let's say there are women in my audience listening right now mm -hmm. who want to meet a guy like you, successful singer, I mean, good-looking dude. What? How, how does a woman go about it? Where did this woman meet you that you had sex with? Yeah, you know, it's hard, actually. To meet me because you're up in this uh, this ticket. Well, I, I, I'm in a, I'm in a, I live in small towns. I travel all the time. I'm nowhere really. I'm right. everywhere and nowhere. And then you know when I'm when I'm on the road, which is a lot, it's hard to get to me. And not 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 by my 
uh, design. Well, the last design, lady who exactly. Where'd you, where'd you meet this lady, the last one you visited? Probably backstage. Backstage. Yeah, somebody, uh, like a meet and greet or something like right. that. Right, you said, hey, you're attractive. How you doing, honey? What's happening? Let's go have a bite to eat. Uh, so, uh, uh, that's the short version. And then you just say, I'm going to take you back to my tick-infested house, and let's go there see you, go. you can't... Uh, <laughs> you can't let the tick outside. suck on your body, baby. Yeah, that's right, man. Let's me and the ticks are going to get a hold of you. They need to do a meet and greet before the show. They need to buy a VIP package and do a meet and greet. Oh. So basically, it cost you $500 to meet me. I'm the biggest whore in the world, man. I mean, it's impressive. $500, man, no problem. Go ahead, go ahead. Now, now, back in the day, do, do, were you one of the, were the bands that got uh, like, like, like caught up in drugs and all that kind of stuff? No. You didn't? You didn't I, do any pot? I got a weird nervous system. I, I pot, yeah, sure. I smoke pot, a lot of smoke, pot, smoke but, a lot of but uh, I, I never really use like I didn't do a lot of cocaine or anything like that. I, so you didn't get caught up in that no, whole thing. No, not at all. And and uh, you you basically lived a pretty straight lifestyle, and you were all about the music. Sounds interesting. Well, how uh, I always well, I wouldn't call I it a straight lifestyle. Question. Well, let me ask you something. Talk about that straight. Didn't people for years think you guys were gay, like you were lovers? Yeah. Well, um, you know. Yeah, because like a lot of people in the, in the early seventies, we were doing the whole glam rock thing. You know, right, I mean, with does the anybody think Gene Simmons is gay? <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> who knows? Maybe he is. I don't know, man. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, that that went down. And then we had some fag from Rolling Stone that. Uh, oh, jeez! <laughs> How much more are we going to learn today? <laughs> that, that, that decided he was going to out us because he made his bones outing Elton John. So right. he. F- he basically outed us <laughs> when we weren't out. You know? You've never you had were, sex. You weren't in. You, you, and I used the, I used that word, by the way, in a very Darryl, respectful yeah, way. You yeah. and John never had sex together. You never participated. We had sex together, but not with each other. In the same room, you would have yeah. sex with women. Yeah, no problem. Did you ever share a woman? Uh, well, um, maybe. I can't remember. To tell you <laughs> That's the truth. a once. Yeah. Who had the bigger penis? I mean, I imagine, you know. Well, I, I actually, I haven't actually noticed. You notice when you're in the same room with a guy and he's got a boner and you're both doing the same girl. You oh. absolutely notice. Well, we always Come say on. that John is a German Shepherd balls with Chihuahua pants. Ah, interesting. I'm going to have to analyze that. <laughs> you have video of you high-fiving oats while you're double-teaming a uh, chick? Uh, no, we didn't, we didn't so get a, a, go that far. When a guy outs you. A journalist. Yeah. What, what do you do? To, do you fight back or you just say, screw it? I mean, what do you do? Uh, well, it's kind of hard to fight back. When you, I mean, that's the whole problem with, with has been or was a problem with me and the media. You can't fight the media. You can't sue. They always have the last word. What you are you going to say? You couldn't sue and say, hey, listen, you've you've disparaged me. You've said I'm gay. Uh, I'm, I'm a straight man. Yeah, that sounds malicious to me. Yeah, well, uh, yeah it's kind of a weird thing to sue for. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is because you're almost saying like you're saying you're, you don't like gay people. Almost, yeah, exactly. Right? It's, yeah, I mean, I, it's actually... What they did to us is an insult to gay people, really. Right. That's right. why I feel. That's right. I have one question, and every guy out there probably wants to know, how do you work through cheating on your wife? Huh? What? You know, oh, you, said you're back to that thing it. again. No, no. He well, cheated on the road, if and then he'd with, go home to Sarah. If, so what? Sarah could handle it. No, how she, did well, she handle it? Because she's that? an extraordinary person, that's how. Did she give you license like you're, you're single on the road? It was or? Uh, not, nothing as simple as license, but, uh-huh. uh, you know, people do this all the time, and not, not just with musicians and people on the road. They're, you know, I think that there's a pact with, with people that are together a long time, and, and they allow for each other's personalities to bear fruit. Let me interpret. So did she that? ever no. sleep? outside of the relationship? You, you I know? never asked. Oh. What you do is, if you yeah. want to have a woman, mm-hmm. a good woman like Sarah, mm-hmm. and you want to cheat, you write Sarah's smile for her, then she shuts up. <laughs> That's uh, all. That, that, actually, <laughs> in a way it works. <laughs> you know, it's so funny to see you dress the way you are today and the way you look. I think it's a great look for you. <laughs> it's very natural. And this is the way you're more comfortable. Well, this is the real me, yeah. When you had to do the, the glam thing, I mean, not that well, you had that to. That was a long time ago, man. Because you're not really a pretty boy kind of type, but I always thought you were because you always dressed up. Well, I was pretty when I was young. Man. But when you perform now, do you dress more like this? Yeah, more this is like pretty a- much the way I dress. And yeah. and and when you, how old were you when you started to realize, man, I can really sing. I like music. Zero. My mom was a singer in a band and a vocal teacher and all that stuff. I mean, I that two, three years old, I was singing. And when do you realize you want to play guitar and, and sing? Well, and guitar came late. I was I started piano when I was five, but I, I didn't start guitar until I, you know, grew up. And when you're a kid and you sing, mm-hmm. is it embarrassing in a way? Do people make fun of you? Do the other boys say, what, what's with you going around singing? What are you, a yeah. fruit? Yeah, yeah exactly. Do. Right. When, especially when you're like 12. And I was a boy soprano. I was you know, say, and I was in seventh grade. Piano, yeah. You know, it's hard to be artistic, isn't it? As yeah. A young well, child? I remember that. You know, I had to sing. Uh, uh, actually, I, I sang on the Christmas album. I did oh, oh Holy Night. Yeah. Right, and that's a real boy soprano kind of song. Right. And I did it, and and my uh, 
teachers made me sing this in front of the whole school Ooh. in seventh grade, and I'm singing the song, and afterward, the uh. cafeteria was no fun, let me tell you. Right. You seem like a guy who can kick ass. You look like a tough guy. Yeah, I look like you, a tough guy. You, right. I've, I've been did, there. You, did you have to fight a lot as a kid because you sang? Yeah. You did? Yeah. You would get into fist fights? Yeah. People, yeah, people, I was, besides singing, I was just an unusual person in my area. Why do you think you were attracted to black musicians more than... I grew uh, up in a, in, a, in a racially integrated place. You know, right. you grow up around Philadelphia, especially in my day when I grew up. It, it, it's very integrated. You so know? there was more Motown there than, than... It was the sound of Philly. It was the neighborhood right. stuff, not Motown. It right. was beyond, you know, before... But I'm saying you get exposed Motown. to Motown and all that other stuff, too. Well, and of course, the like I said, before stuff. Motown. Right. I mean, I do, you know, street corner music and, and you know, do what music, uh, gospel music, soul music, church music, all that stuff is, 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 that's my baby food. Well, you're a cool dude. T-Bone, you know I love you. I love you, Howard. Yeah. Did you ever actually beat up uh, Oates? Did you ever have to kick his ass? I mean, did you ever have a fist You know fight something? I'd have a hard time. He was a wrestler. Do you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah. John could kick ass, man. Really? Yeah. So, I mean, one, mano a mano would be a tough fight. He wrote that song, by the way. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, it, it would be an interesting fight. I got the reach, but he's got the, the grappling power. Let's go to uh, Sal. Sal, you're on the air in Lodi, New Jersey. Hey, now. Hey, now. I'll tell you what, I didn't, when I heard that Daryl was going to be on this morning, I really didn't think much of it, but boy, he turned out to be a real entertaining guest. Yes. You didn't think much of me? Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. the hell with him? <laughs> this guy's a deer. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Hey, that's my new thing. Yeah. Well, I guess well, you, you want a deer. new fan just from this <laughs> Well, interview. thank you, sir. That's good. All right, thank you. i tell you what, let me play a little bit of this you song. You know what, the one thing we haven't asked is where the music comes from. Like, when you sit down to write a song, is it easy? Is it hard? Does it take you a long time? Is Are you it... one of those guys who say it comes from God? Mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you're not a start, you're, came from you, right? Yeah, came yeah. from straight from uh, my life. Uh, was your father upset that you became a musician? No, they're both musicians. Mm -hmm. they, so they like it. They push me, yeah. And were they thrilled with your success? Did they get to see they, your and, and still are, yeah. They're still alive. Yeah. And you have but, a good relationship with yeah, them. Yeah, absolutely. Are you a craftsman with the music? Or do yeah. you work at it? Or it's not streaming it, through it, you, it just doesn't come out? Both. It I, does? I'm a spontaneous person, but then I'm, I, you know, I've been doing it so long, I'm into the craft of it uh -huh. also. But you know, when I, do a, when I do a vocal, what you hear on the vocals is pretty much what I did first take and things oh, like that. And okay. T-Bone's there all the time. He knows. Right. Yeah. You know, especially the end of the song, all the ad-libs and everything. That, uh -huh. that, that just comes out of my head. And I want to thank you for coming in today. Thanks it was for really having great me. to have you here. Daryl Hall, everyone. Daryl, <laughs> yes? what do you think now that you've met Howard and you've been in there, you mixed it up? I love this, man. I, I get to say my shit, you know? This is fantastic. It seems like you really wanted to understand what goes into writing a song and yeah. your mindset and your upbringing yeah. and everything. No, it was good. It was good. I, I, this was actually a really cool interview. It's got to be different when you compare it to all the interviews you've done over the years. This has got to uh, be one of the more unique. Yeah, no pussyfooting. No, definitely not. <laughs> he went right for it with asking about Sarah. And sure. What do you think she's gonna, how do you think she's going to react to hearing... You know, uh, She'll have uh, mixed reactions, <laughs> but that's that's our, our relationship. Mixed reactions. Got to keep it open and yeah, say yeah. what you really mean. But that was uh, that was a really good interview. Thank you. And good luck with your holiday album and the holiday shows and everything. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right.